This is a GCSE physics presentation on magnets. To get started, cast your mind back to Key Stage 3 when you started secondary school. What can you remember about magnets and the property and uses of magnets? Pause the presentation, scribble down as many ideas as you can, and when you're ready, continue with the presentation. At this point, you should have a whole load of statements, facts, keywords, and ideas from the last time you had lessons on magnets from Key Stage 3. And what I'd like you to do is use that information to give your best answers to the true or false statements in front of you. It'd be even better if you think a statement is false. How can you change that statement to make it true? Pause the presentation, go through, and at the end, you can check your answers. So pause now. And let's have a look at the answers. So as I said, each one of these you should have already done previously. So if any of them are confusing you or any of them you're not sure of, it's well worth going back and reading up on these from your Key Stage 3 science book or a textbook or a relevant website and make sure that you've got these clear in your head before you go any further. Just to help you along, a little summary. You do need to know the terms attract, you do need to know repel. You should know that opposite poles, north and south, will attract. The same poles or like poles will repel. So south and south, north and north will repel. You should know magnetic substances or iron, cobalt, nickel. You can also talk about steel, but steel is an alloy which is made up of more than one metal, including iron. You need to know about the fact that the magnitude of a magnetic force decreases as you move further away from the magnet. You should know that closer to the poles, magnetic field lines are closer together, and so the magnetic force is stronger. And you should also know that a magnetic field line travels from north to south pole. In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the properties of magnets, and we're going to talk about permanent and induced magnets. So first off, what is a field? Well, it's not anything to do with green grassy knolls. When we talk in physics about fields, we're talking about an area around an object in which a force is actually applied. In this case, we talk about a magnetic force. Hence, two magnets don't have to be touching each other in order to have an effect on each other. And the area around the magnet where a magnetic force exists is referred to as a magnetic field. Magnetic fields are invisible, but we can see what are called magnetic field lines using different types of experiments. Quite often, iron filings is the classic one to form the lines. And you end up with a pattern similar to what you see at the bottom of the screen. Now, in terms of permanent and induced magnets, you need to know the definitions of those. So a permanent magnet is always magnetic and produces its own magnetic field. An induced magnet is only magnetic when it's inside the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. It'll always have a force of attraction, so induced magnets will always attract things to them. And when you have an induced magnet and you take it out of the magnetic field, it will quickly demagnetize. And if you think of a paper clip and a magnet, if you put the paper clip up to the magnet, the paper clip becomes magnetic. It will attract other paper clips and you can end up with a big chain. But the second you take that first paper clip far enough away from the magnet that it's outside of its magnetic field, all the other paper clips and the one you're holding will lose their magnetism and all the paper clips will fall. Now you should be aware of how to draw a magnetic field. And to draw a magnetic field, we would normally use what's called a plotting compass. When we get a plotting compass, if, for example, we put the plotting compass at A, what direction would the needle change to? Well, the needle would run north-south because it would line up with the magnetic field line. At point B, if we put the plotting compass at point B, what would happen? Again, the plotting compass needle has lined up with the magnetic field line. And if we went and we put the plotting compass at point C, again we have the needle and the plotting compass lining up along with the magnetic field. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that inside the compass, the red and blue are pointing to their opposite poles. So the red south pole, represented by the blue bit on the needle, is pointing towards the north pole of the magnet and the reverse is true for the opposite poles. 
what I'd like you to do is cast your mind back to the experiment where you were given a plot and compass, a pencil, a piece of paper and a magnet, and you were asked to basically draw the magnetic field lines using the plot and compass. Try and come up with a method, a step-by-step -step instructions on how you'd actually do that task. And when you're ready, restart the presentation and you can look at the provided method. So pause the presentation now and come up with a method for plotting a magnetic field. Well, these are the main points you need to include in your method. Things that people forget are that you have to put the bar magnet down and then draw a box around it so you know where the magnet is at all times, even if you take the pencil away to draw the lines. You have to make sure that when you're using the plot and compass that you place it in as many locations as possible and make sure that you are putting a very fine pencil mark at the point of the needle. And you need to repeat it lots and lots of times to make sure that you're getting as much data as possible. Remember, magnetic force is always from north to south. So when you're drawing magnetic field lines, one of the things that people forget is at the end, they add the arrows onto every single line showing the magnetic field lines going from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole of the magnet. Remember, of course, on the Earth, we also have a magnetic field around the Earth. And the reason we have a magnetic field around the Earth is because of the properties of the core inside the inner core of the Earth. As a consequence, that magnetic force is responsible for protecting us from a lot of the solar radiation that otherwise would very quickly turn the Earth into something that looks like Mars. Some researchers believe that Mars had a magnetic field around it, and for some reason that magnetic field is no longer there, and as a consequence, the solar radiation has destroyed the entire planet. And it is one of the arguments that potentially water and possibly even some sort of life existed on Mars at one point. So just to finish off, all you have to do is create a top 10 list of facts to know about magnets.